Hi, welcome to DL Academy. Today, I'm going to show you how to detail a pad foundation using Autodesk Revit. Here is my default US structural analysis interface and default template has two levels. When I move to one of my elevation, level 1 and level 2 elevations are 0 and plus 10 feet respectively. So, I want to create a new level for foundation just under the level 1. I set my new elevation to, minus 4 feet. I'm going to detail a square pad foundation, having a 9 by 9 inches concrete column on it. Therefore, first of all, I place the column. Then, in the properties window, I select a one of concrete rectangular column type, and I create a new column by duplicating the selected column. I assign, my own name for the column and, the required dimensions as necessary. Now, my new column is created and, I just placed it somewhere in my active level. However, here, it's only up to level 1 in depth, but I want this up to my new level of the foundation. Therefore, I moved into a one of my elevation. Next, I select my column, and in properties window, I change the base level, to level 3. Now, my column's base level is perfectly up to the foundation level. Next, I'm going to create the pad foundation. I'm still on the level 2, and I click the isolated foundation in the structure tab. And I want to, create a square pad foundation. Therefore, I duplicate the existing one and, assign a new name and dimensions as necessary for my new foundation type. Now, my new foundation type is ready, and I just place it on my foundation level, by aligning to the column center. Then, the foundation is visible in the elevations and, in the foundation level. Now, creating and modeling of the pad foundation and the column is finished. Next, I'm going to add some views for the detailing, so, in the view tab. I add a callout, and place it around the plan of the pad foundation. I change the name of callout to plan F1, and I open the view. Here, I set the scale to half inch to 1 feet, and the detail level to fine. Next, I select the outer view and, by right clicking, select, hide the view, and then select the elements. Now, detail view for the pad foundation is created. Then, I'm going to add a section view for the detailing. I place section view and, name it to section F1 and open it. Set the scale to half inch to 1 feet and, detail level to the fine. Next, I want to show a screed for the foundation. Since I didn't model the screed with the foundation, I'm going to manually draw the screed by fill region. Click on fill region and I change the line style to wide line, to match with the existing cut lines of the foundation. Next, I select the rectangle and, draw the screed with modifying tools. Place dimension constraint to maintain the thickness for the screed to 3 inches and finish the fill region. New fill region is created. Here, my fill region pattern is vertical lines. I create a new fill region pattern. Then, I assign the name as screed and, change the foreground fill pattern to concrete. Now, screed is finished. 
Next I'm going to hide the fill patterns for foundation and column. For that, select them, and under the right click menu, select override graphics in view, then by category, and remove the tick of foreground visible in cut pattern. I repeat the same procedure in plan F1 detailing view also. In addition, I don't want to see this section symbol in my detailing view. Therefore, I hide this by selecting hide in view in the right click menu, and the elements. Then, I move to section F1 view. Here, I don't want to show this elevation lines in my details. However, sometimes, I may want to show the ground level. Therefore, I draw the ground level by a detail line. So, I click detail line and select thin line and draw lines by the side of the column. Then, I can hide the unnecessary level line from the detail. Next, I'm going to load a break line for the project. For that, I select insert tab and click load family. Under the US library, go to detail items and next in general folder select M break line and open. Break line is loaded, and I can apply it on annotate tab, component. I place it somewhere here and I adjust my view like this. Break line perfectly break the column. I adjust the view to required region and hide it. Next. I'm going to draw the symbol for the ground level. By using the detail line, I just draw a piece of line like this. I use the copy tool to duplicate the line. Then I select them all and using the mirror tool, I create a nice symbol for the ground level. Next, I'm going to add dimensions. I just click the dimension tool and place it like this. I want to create a my own dimension style with the small dots instead of the arrows. Therefore, I duplicate the existing dimension style and assign the name as I need. I change the tick mark to the fill dot small. This style is looking good for structural detailing. Then, I place the other dimensions with my new style. Here, it's showing 0 feet when the length is less than the 1 feet. But I don't want to show it. Therefore, I edit it under the Manage tab and select the project unit and change the format for the length. Select feet and fractional inches, and change the rounding to nearest one inch. Then, I tick suppressed zero feet. Now, the dimensions look is perfect. I place the dimension for the depth of foundation. However, this shall be vary according to the ground condition. Therefore, I want to show this depth as the minimum depth. So, I click on the dimension value and add prefix of minimum. Next, I add some dimensions for the plan view also. Some would prefer to add dimensions over the position of column on pad foundation. Therefore, add it for both sides. Now, basic details for the outlining is complete. Next, I'm going to add reinforcement for the foundation. For that, first of all I want to add required cover to the reinforcement as the structural design. Here. My pad foundation is somewhat in mild exposure condition and therefore I assign 2 inch cover for it. For the column, I assign 1 and half inch cover. Now, click rebar.
Here I used default rebar size and shape with existing rebar placement types. Then, I place the bar in the bottom layer of the foundation. Next, I change the rebar type and size to the 10mm H10 rebar. I move to the plan view. However, it doesn't show the rebar. But when I move the mouse pointer on it, I can select it. So, I select it and in the properties window, edit the view visibility state. Then, tick view unobscured for the plan view. Now, the rebar is visible. I change the rebar set to maximum spacing of 6 inches. Next I place 90 degree of hooks at both side of the rebar like this. Then, I placed similar bars perpendicular to the existing bars. I changed the bar type and size and unobscured the rebar view. Set rebar to maximum spacing of 6 inches. Both the layers of rebar now created and next I have to add some constraints. I select the rebar and go to edit constraint. Then, I add minus 1 inch of constraint for both sides. Finish the constraint. I repeat the same procedure for the other rebar layer too. When I move to the sectional view, the rebar layers are overlapped. Therefore, I select the top layer and moved it to up. Now the rebar view is perfect. Next, I'm going to tag the rebar. For that, I select Tag by Category. I place it for the bar like this. Then, I change the Tag properties as I need. Here, I'm using tags including number of bars and spacing. I repeat the process for all rebar types. Here, the reinforcement bar spacing is including 0 feet. Therefore, I move to edit the project unit and under the discipline of the structural, edit details as required. Then I clicked on the each rebar tag and now it's look as I needed. Next, I'm going to place rebar tags in the section view. Repeat the process as previous and, I placed the tags as I need.
Then, I want to place my details on a sheet. So, I open the sheet. Simply drag the required detail views onto the sheets and place where it is necessary. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. Have a nice day.